Where's my camera? Hi. Hi. Sorry that I had to rush out of work to get here. You're Florian Caps. Um, people know you mostly for saving the last Polaroid factory on, in the Netherlands and, um, and creating Impossible Project. I know now you're into something different and um, I would like to know what's the story with that. You know, uh, basically, I, I don't feel it's it's something different. Maybe it has a different name, but um, I think the the spirit behind it and the urgency behind it is is still the same. So, uh, I I I try my very best to somehow uh, raise the awareness and get people excited about uh, analog technologies and especially about technologies that are uh, endangered because in, in a digital world, many people run into the digital direction and um, more and more think digital. And I think that um, the digital um, age is one of the, the, the biggest chances that analog technologies ever had because digital doesn't cover a lot of, of um, fields and a lot of, of destinies and senses the human being has. So. Um, after saving the last Polaroid factory, I even got more addicted about all kinds of analog technologies and, and, um, I started searching and to connect to other people who, you know, like ourselves, um, are really working very hard to keep these analog technologies alive and not even keep them alive, but even, you know, re reinvent them and, um, find new solutions so that they can perfectly fit into our digital world. So I c created a company that is called SuperSense, who is basically specializes on building this global network, finding great um, manufacturers, finding these great people and these, these unique machines, um, and try to connect them to this new uh, next generation um, users and, and customers in order to keep things alive that in my understanding, uh, they they are not allowed to go away forever. So that's what we are doing. No, yeah, I saw that um, in SuperSense, which has a store in in Vienna, Austria, which is where you're from. No. Yes, that's what where where I'm from. You press your own records and you do posters there, and you you sell the instant film. You actually do eight by ten and twenty by twenty four, which is something I've been wanting to do with my family because I think it's a part of history. So, so yeah, I understand what you mean. I've always also tried to keep, you know, connecting new generations, which are the future, to what today is the reality. A digital and analog can be together and benefit from each other. So, um, when you heard about the Fuji News, a discontinuing pack film, I remember seeing that you just took it as an um, opportunity to try to keep it in production. You went to Japan, you opened the... Um, the travel log you have in SuperSense, and you keep keeping updates. Uh, that didn't work. Did the um, Japanese think maybe it was a threat to their Instax line, or you don't know? I, I honestly don't know. And you know, uh, the, when when Fuji announced this, everybody was shocked, and the people say, "Hey, come on, doc, you have you have to do something. You you did it for the Polaroid factory," and I said, "You know, Fuji is is um, very difficult because." Uh, over all these years, uh, I, I really couldn't get in, in touch with them. Um, I tried several times because, you know, they are in, an incredible analog company and they're, you know, have found a way to, to con you know, to use all their analog um, experience to do a lot of wonderful projects, you know, and, and products in all other kind of fields. So, um, so I said, I go there. Uh, if if I really get the chance to talk to the to the Fuji management and as they as they really um, you know agreed to that and we had a, a set up a meeting I said okay let's go to Japan and fight for this because maybe they they haven't yet understood the the incredible demand and importance of their product of their backfield product outside of Asia because I think they are. You know, they just had on their mind this old passport business, which was going down. And uh, so I, I tried my best to connect to them. Why this, this, why this, you know, these meetings and these negotiations haven't been successful? 
I don't know. You know, it's very hard to to read uh, Japanese minds and and know what they are doing. But my feeling is this: maybe you know, this decision has been already taken a long time ago, and maybe uh, the machines and technology um, have have been dismantled even a long time before uh, I went there. So I don't know. It and it doesn't matter. You know, in fact, um, Fuji has closed this chapter and. Uh, it was a little painful to accept this, but on the other hand, it opens also, you know, many other opportunities because uh, since then I have the, the luck and the, the great pleasure to connect to several other people um, that, you know, are ready to to maybe uh, give it another chance and look at the topic from a different point of view. You know, yeah, when the news happened about that, I remember New 55 announced with their color um, intentions and doing the uh, New 55 color. And also the people in Cat Labs in, that are very close to New 55 have also talked about making pack film. I think they're talking with Berger also towards that. And it would be nice. You think there's enough um, demand of pack film for maybe more than one person making it? You know, I I don't think that uh, you know I don't even know if 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 one person will finally succeed in making it, and uh, I don't see you know much sense to to have different people making different versions. I still think and hope that you know we should bundle all energies and work on this together, and um, you know we we need a lot of things and a lot of of brain um, brain capacity and creativity. So. I, I also reached out to the cat lab people uh, in order to, you know, start a communication and 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 think about a way to to work together. For me, for me, for me, I don't know. For me, the 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 reason why I I uh, I, I focus now on the new 55 team and and try to support them as as good as I can is that they are the only ones who have a production basically in place, we have a, a peel apart product, we have already six years experience uh, and they are, have already spent six years of blood, sweat and tears to go through this incredible uh, challenge. And, you know, I feel very close to them because, you know, I know what how difficult it is because, you know, we had this all these incredible challenges with the impossible project from from the start. So this is this is something that you know the cat lab people who are really great people you know uh, they they haven't they haven't been there and i think this is important to combine uh, experience like the new 55 with the passion and the, the energy of, of people like cat lab and together make this you know happen and um with about the new basically i think a week ago you announced the alliance of new 55 um your team and uh, david bachnet um, as a supporter too, how is that going to work? Is New 55 maybe going to do production or is it going to be moving to Europe or do you have an idea yeah. yet? You know, I have a, a very precise idea and, you know, uh, I think the, the success of a, of a network and of people working together is, is that everybody really can concentrate on the things they are the best in. So um, the reason... Um, uh, I, I made this partnership uh, with New 55 and David Bonnet is that um, New 55, they should really have the money and the time to purely concentrate on the manufacturing. These people, they are incredible experienced and, you know, when it's about developing a project, about lab tests, about, you know, manufacturing, uh, they, they love to build crazy machines out of, you know, all this stuff. But they, they they are not too 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 keen in and they don't you know it's a big burden for them to think about marketing and communication and distribution so i said you know i i i promised myself i will never again touch production because you know what i the learnings i had in the factory is the netherlands you know i said whoa this is you know i don't know nothing about it and with the impossible project it was good that i didn't know anything about it because otherwise I, I wouldn't have you know started that but I would never touch a factory manufacturing again no I cannot do it and I made many mistakes on that so I, I said I concentrate 
on the communication of building the networks, works of getting the people excited. And most importantly, I try to explain this, this complicated materials to people who have never heard about it. You know, I love to get people excited who start to discover the magic of instant photography to create new customers. And this was also, you know, my role uh, with the Impossible Project. Um, it's, it's about re repositioning this product in the digital world and also think about, um, you know, ways to combine it with digital. That's also the reason why I invented this Instant Lab. I want to have, you know, digital to analog converters to make things that these two worlds come together. And David Bonnet, you know, for sure is incredible because he's an experienced businessman. He's very well connected uh, and very, uh, he's serious, you know, because I'm still crazy guy and 55 guys are out of their mind, very passionate. So we need somebody who really has the experience and also a financial background um, to to look at this from, a, from the commercial point of view, because it's not about an art project. It's not about a crazy adventure or saving the life uh, of the of the world it's really about trying to, to build a business uh, for this material so to to guarantee an ongoing um, future for for Pilipard instant film no yes I, I I agree with you that manufacturing and keeping the future involves a lot more than just passion it requires it to to make it profitable. That's a thing that I've read a lot about um, New 55 and how they did their Kickstarter and that the pricing point is, even though it went down when they managed to fulfill the rewards, people still complain about price, but that's the new reality. That's what I keep on saying to people is that if you want some a product that's in, you know, and in, needs investigation and needs, it's a small market, it's never gonna be the same price of what we remember. Do you agree with that like price point will probably never be as cheap or affordable as it was before? Exactly. And, but my feeling is that nowadays um, when people live in a world where, where the products are, you know, are getting cheaper and cheaper, you know, it, it isn't, it is, it's, it's even a big problem or uh, with the food, you know, the, the price for milk and whatever goes down and down and down and down. But the people find out that this has a really an impact uh, on the quality um, of, of the product. So, you know, we had this problem or these problems, this challenge with, with uh, we still have, Impossible has the problem. But the people say, hey, back in the days I bought a Polaroid pack 600 for nine US, now it's about 24 US dollars. Are you crazy? You know, you are greedy bastards. But when we invite these people and they come to the factory, and they see how we produce this this product. You know, they, they totally fall in love and they say, wow, now we understand the soul and the complexity. And and this is, this is I think, important. And this is what I also try with New 55, um, to show what they are doing and how much effort they're doing. It's basically handcrafted. It's, it's, you know, they invested all their money. And, you know, even in 10 years, they will not, um, you know, make any profit out of that because it's it's such a beautiful handmade product that you, you know, each time you should open the box and you make a shot. For me, it's it's the most valuable thing you can do when you take a picture. Of course, you will never compete to a, you know, a printout from your iPhone photo. But, you know, it's like going to McDonald's and having a hamburger or sometimes you go to a nice sushi place and have a plate of wonderful handmade sushi. I think it's perfect, you know, sense to make, you know, have both next to each other and decide what, what you want to do. But you really have to take the time to, to explain to people, to give them the reason for the pricing, to, you know, show all the, the passion and the, the, the steps in there and, you know, show how much uh, effort it is um, to, to explain um, the value of it. So it's, I think it's it, that's it's um, our biggest challenge, and then next to next to reinventing it, it to communicate it so that people really understand it. And uh, yeah, this this is my main role in this. Okay, and um, do you think that you'll be able to share the knowledge that Impossible has towards packaging and 
um, more like a factory production, which I'm sure the packaging and that requires a lot of effort. It's not just making the product, but presenting it and um, marketing and all that is um, you're going to try to share and merge New 55 with their pack film and the New 55 color with um, the knowledge that Impossible has, you know, um, un understood throughout the time. Um, you know, the, the good news is that uh, Impossible agreed to help us uh, in that. Uh, but their most important support now in the first step uh, is not regarding uh, the, the, the marketing and the packaging. It's we urgently need their support in, in the production of some super complicated um, components that we need for the film. And uh, I'm very happy to say that, you know, the Impossible Project has become uh, in the last years a very, very sophisticated high-tech um, manufacturer of wonderful uh, photochemical uh, materials. So we already started some tests with them and this is very promising, especially like, you know, their new CTO, Stephen Hirschen, uh, who worked for, for Polaroid many years. He's an incredible, you know, scientist, and um, so uh, they support us as a supplier of some very, very uh, mind-blowing materials. And um, the Kickstarter will be uh, the 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 opportunity to also present, you know, th their support uh, because this is also important to understand how complex the whole thing is. So, so answering your yes, we we have a close co co collaboration with uh, Impossible. First step, mainly in, in the development of new peel apart materials, um, not not too much in, in marketing and communication, because uh, first you know we need to, uh, really the, the product to kick ass. I mean, I, I always think about all the know how that went down with Polaroid or Fuji is going to take down when they don't agree to um, I guess collaborate. Is that I mean, I understand it takes a lot of effort and. Um, investigation and that is just sad that no one will pass on a little bit of the information has it changed a lot towards the chemicals that nowadays there's a lot of illegal chemicals and the formulas even though if you have them would not be possible to replicate yet the problem in the case of fuji is not so much the that the, the, the knowledge is not passed on the 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 real problem with Fuji is that, you know, these machines are not passed on, you know, that they prefer to, to scrap the machines or throw them away instead of uh, basically selling it to us. Because the problem is as the, as the demand of such, um, for such materials is much smaller than back in the days, um, this huge investment to build such a machine, and these are super sophisticated, complicated machines, is it's very very hard for a startup company. So, um, you know, it's it's crazy because back in the in the in the days with, with Polaroid, we had all the machines, but we didn't have any chance or didn't know nothing about the, the photo system, so the, the positive negative to fill in the machine. So this was the challenge. Now with Fuji, we have a lot of different materials. So we have this. Uh, new 55 um, positive negative material, which is gorgeous. We we have uh, you know the hope to develop our own new color together with with possible impossible. We still have uh, some some leftover materials of 2020 20 by 24 studio. So we we could write production. We could start production right basically right from the start. But we don't have these assembly machines this time. So this is the huge challenge okay how can we use you know how can we find a way to create new type 100 pack film or even single sheet in this format without going crazy because you know the system is super complicated of positive negative folding over each other and so it's exactly the other the other way around this time and we have all the knowledge and we would also know how to build such a machine but you know, it would be a huge, huge investment that, you know, it's too much for such a business. business. So the first steps, once you've already put everyone together, um, the first step, you, you've you talked about a Kickstarter. I know Bob Crowley has talked about Kickstarter and the efforts towards producing, um, a, let's say, a mass production product. Um, so if there would be a first Kickstarter, which I'm, I'm sure there will be, would it be towards building this machine? 
um, to make new 55 or to make um, pack film? I know it's probably common. The no, machine can be similar. It, no, it's, I think, you know, we, we, we're going to take one step after the other, which is important to, to take small steps and very clearly communicate the step. The first step basically is to to find out if this idea and this concept that uh, Bob Crowley and, and together with Stephen Hirschen had uh, to to reinvent a complete new color peel apart film. Um, and this material will be essential for all our next steps, no, no matter if we cut it in, in uh, type 100 or 20 by 24, because uh, if we have really the availability of a new color material, this adds an important um, important impact on the whole peel apart product. So the first Kickstarter will be to, to find out a way uh, to, to develop this product as well as to build the machines to produce this um, product in, in some kind of larger scale at the new, new 55 um, factory. Another part will go in the uh, feasibility study of how can we approach this Type 100 pack film um, production from another point of view. So how can we learn from in the past, but you know, combine this with modern technologies in order to find a modern way of starting the mass production of, of peel apart type 100. So we cannot expect to have type 100 within the next, you know, several months or even year. Uh, but the first Kickstarter is a first step to really look at it closely and to basically uh, reinvent uh, the color peel apart from material that. Um, first, the first product will be a four by five inch film that is using the the new peel apart system. So it would be focused towards the five forty five holder, what the same as new fifty five basically, because there also was pack film that was four by five, which also Fuji cut away a long time. Is the idea to make it um, that size or use the the um, how do you say the five forty five holder? And the first, the first product, as you can imagine, is you know the the existing system that they have. So they they have you know this hand manufacturing of this four by five with the holder. But uh, as you can imagine, we as soon as we have the material, we will you know with all our energy um, make this material accessible to everybody. Um, you know, uh, no matter what kind of hardware he has. So we have a lot of plans and ideas um, to. Because you know, this is uh, this is this is urgent, you know, for, and this is very crucial. Not many, well, not too many people have this four uh, by five inch Polaroid back frame, and you need this huge camera. So it's it's very very complicated to fall in love with the material. So you can imagine we try very hard to to cut it into other formats, so uh, we step by step uh, can get more people excited and also to you know, smaller formats and more portable and more easy cameras. No, yeah, I understand the five, uh, the 545 and the 4x5 format is um, a smaller group towards um, marketing and selling. So it's understandable that you want to approach as much people and users as, as you can. So um, apart from the new 55, um, what's your opinion on the state of um, the Polaroid film? Now that we know pack film is gone, New 55 has been um, a new player for a long time, not so long, but a while, and impossible too. But now we have people like Leica or Instax and the tendency to make cameras uh, focused on Instax. I know Impossible made a camera, the L1 or I1. I never remember if it's an L or an I. But do you think they'll I be think it's an I. investing on, on making new cameras for the Impossible film? like? Leica did, or maybe Lomography will invest on film or backs for their cameras with this new film. You think that could happen? You know, my dream was always that uh, as many people uh, as possible start to build even their own cameras. So um, what we started um, was to develop this, this FPU. So this is a, basically this film processing unit. This is the very special part that makes uh, an instant or a Polaroid camera or an impossible camera different from all other cameras. And this is very complicated to, to, 
to develop. So we developed this back in the days. So and even wanted to make it an open source. I said everybody who wants to build their own camera is a pinhole. You know they should be able to purchase that and build their own cameras. And um, then we had Impossible had some technical issues, uh, you know, with the film and also this film processing unit. So we are not there. But you know, this I one is a first step into building new cameras. But I agree with you, you know, I want to open this, the magic of this, this material and uh, peel, especially peel apart material to, to basically everybody. So I'm, I think, you know, uh, and I, I, I love what Leica is doing and they're the, one of the most experienced camera manufacturer that still can produce analog cameras. Of course, I'm disappointed that they decided to go for the Instax, uh, material because you know it's uh, still uh, not my my favorite uh, instant analog material but uh, this is I think as a first step into it, it's also good because it shows that there is a new demand there there is no interest in instant and um, impossible for me is still the most lovely company in that field because it carries on the leg legacy of, of Polaroid and also takes care of the large format. You know, we have this eight by 10. Um, I will do my best and we started already some research to also, you know, restart the production of 20 by 24 uh, on impossible material. And now they start cooperating with us on the, on the peel apart, which is for me, even, you know, the, the most analog uh, instant material because you still get your hands dirty, which is, and you smell it. It's uh, even even uh, more attractive nowadays. So, um, I, 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 in my dreams. So, if I can go crazy, I see a lot of different uh, camera formats. I uh, also see maybe there, you know, we we can produce instant film that goes into a thirty-five millimeter camera. You know, there has been this Polaroid um, slide film with this little processor back in the days. So. You know, we can do a lot of crazy things. Um, the the people are really keen to, to dive into instant photography. And I think we can even um, redefine instant uh, in in today's world. Um, because anyhow, instant is, is crazy because uh, a digital camera will always be much more instant than, than any instant cameras from back in the days. So, yeah. I think you know we can dis you know let's not start about talking about my dreams and my concepts and what kind of cameras I would love to build or you know, would love to inspire companies to build. Uh, there's a lot of dreams there, and you know you also go to Fotokina, right? Yes, I will be there on Friday, though. Yeah, I think you know when you go there, you see how fucking boring the world of photography has become you know there are big halls of what of sd cards and all the cameras basically look the same they're smaller or whatever but uh, that's not a lot of exciting stuff going on so um we work very hard to to make the photokinas um of you know coming two years and four years six years uh more exciting again uh and surprise the people and invite them to get their hands dirty again and and shoot across you know all borders and 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 stuff so i think there will be a, a lot of, of more um, um, instant cameras and that, to be honest a little bit i'm disappointed a little bit about leica because i have expected a, a very new concept for the fuji instax format and now it basically looks a little bit like a you know a fuji camera to me. Yes, I actually made a video which I haven't published yet about my opinion on the subject, which is it's sad that someone with the resources to make something different has just gone with the same concept of, you know, pre-focused and it's all the same. It looks a little nicer, has the double the price point even more, but it looks <laughs> the same. It's, it's just, I feel with the, the, they could have done so much more and that the Leica Absolutely. users are people that are used to focusing themselves. There's no out of focus on their on the M line, maybe on the small camera. So I yeah, but, and, I and, found and, it hard to see. And and why didn't they go to the Instax wide format? You know, that's crazy. Why you know they must hate this this small format as everybody else hates it.
it's I always find that the the price point for the small and the wide is almost the same. Why not just make things for the wide? You know, it's nicer to put on your fridge. It's nicer to give to a friend. It's nicer to share. So, but I I don't understand it just like you do. We don't we, we don't we don't have to understand everything. No, no, that they don't call us for my opinion. At least not me. But you know that's good because you know, then we can rock and make the first really nice large format camera. Oh yeah, I, I, I'm all about large format. I actually have an 8x10 processor in the bedroom, which I'm still waiting to be able to buy some impossible film and start. But, um, well, it was a pleasure having you and talking to you. Thank you for, for having time for me. And um, good luck with your Kickstarter campaign and thank you. the hard work, okay? Thank you, yeah, you too, thanks for helping us. Thank you.